Hello and welcome to this new After Effects tutorial by Flowmotion. And today we are going to take a look at something very interesting. I just recently found a very nice way on how to create a very realistic looking waterfall inside of After Effects with only built-in effects. And of course I wanted to share it with you. So let's directly jump into After Effects and let's get started by clicking on the new composition. And let's call this our waterfall comp 1920 by 1080 24 frames it should be fine let's just make this 10 seconds long and hit ok just for the sake of it that it's a 3d tutorial let's create a solid so basically we are going to create a 3d environment really quick let's create a solid by hit ctrl y or simply clicking on layer new solid call this our floor and hit OK. Just bring out a checkerboard effect. I'm just typing this into the effects and presets panel here. Drag it out, make the width a bit wider. 44 looks nice for me. Now let's hit the 3D switch, which is here. Then we hit W, which brings up this rotation icon. And then we just rotate it until it's flat. And if you hold down the shift button, it snaps each 45 degrees. So it's flat. Just hit V. So we have our normal mouse back in action and just drag it down to the floor. And also create a new camera layer, new camera. By default, I have 50 millimeter focal length, which just works fine for me. So why? Clicking C, you get all the camera options, roll, tilt, pan, zoom, and so on. So just to prove that we are in 3D space, I can rotate this. But let's just hit reset here. Let's create a new layer and let's call this our waterfall and hit OK. And in this case, as we want to have it as realistic as possible, we are playing a bit with particles. But to make this a little bit more interesting, let's try to just focus on the particle systems that come with After Effects. So let's just type in particles and we have a, like three different systems and I would go with the particle world. By applying this effect and actually clicking on the effect, you can see the grid and guides, which you can disable and enable here. So at first, let's just line the floor of the particle world to our floor that we already have in here. We could bring the floor back up by just clicking on the floor, bring this one up or bringing the floor down here by going into our physics. There we have the floor. And there we can adjust the floor position. So I'm just eyeballing this at the moment, but obviously you could create some lines, find out the vanishing point and, and go with that. Okay, perfect. So let's just take a look on what the effect is doing by default. So I'm just previewing this. And let's go down with the resolution for the playback. So I'm just going to half. So we can see it a bit better. Okay, by default, it's doing what the name is saying. It's an explosive effect. So let's just change that to something like a direction axis. And we're already seeing what this is doing. It's going into one direction now. So let's think about this as it would be water. If our waterfall of our river would be somewhere around here and then the water should drop we sh should definitely play with our velocity of the water as well as the gravity as both of them kind of interact. So as I'm increasing the velocity, of course, it shoots out more into one direction. And if I go down with that, you can see that this kind of gets a curve where we want to go for. And by playing with the gravity, we can also play with that. Great, so let's have a look what we have created so far. This is kind of the water falling down, which is from the 
angle and the velocity looks quite good at the moment. And don't forget we are in 3D space, so we can have a look at this from all angles. And let's just maybe look at it from the front. And now we can go into our producer, which is basically the place where the particles get shoot out. So this is the emitter of the particles. We just want to change the size or the shape of the emitter. So let's play with the radius of our emitter. You have to think about the emitter in the particle world as, as if it is a sphere. So you could stretch it in all directions. So let's stretch this out in the Z axis. Okay, and now we could have a look again from all sides. And this is starting to look more like the behavior of a waterfall. Maybe let's just bring this up a little bit so we see it a little bit better. And now let's play with our burst rate and the longevity. So let's just make it a little bit longer so we see the particles longer in the frame. And also play with the birth rate. Let's also bring this up to four. And you may have seen that the color just changed when I played with the longevity. And that's because the color is changing from, if I bring this down, it is changing from yellow to red at the moment over time. So if I would make the longevity even longer, it would become more yellow over here because out of the frame it would get red. But let's deal with the color later. At the moment we just want to get the look right. So let's jump back into our physics. For the floor we obviously don't want our particles to fall all the way through the floor, but for our waterfall we want them to bounce. And if I'm playing this back now you can see which effect we are creating with that. And let me actually bring all of this a bit more to the side and I'm just bringing the floor more on the side so we can see more obvious what's happening there. So now let's just play with our settings of the bounce so it looks like all the water is, is splashing on the ground and we get this nice kind of the white water effect happening when it hits the floor. And we can do that with the bounce settings. So once we have set the floor action to bounce, we could play around with the bounciness and just bring it low until we get this kind of foam happening over here. So maybe even a little bit less. And let's play this back. Maybe make this a little bit more random and spread it a bit more so the small water particles would fly all over the place. Let's again watch this from a different angle. It's starting to look really nice. So now let's start working with the colors. And if you have a look at, at a real at photographs of real waterfalls, you can see that they're not with blue water, obviously, but most of the part where the water is falling, it looks like it's almost white because it's reflecting all the surroundings. And you can also see a bit through it. So the combination of the water falling with the air makes them look almost white, but of course there's a little blue in it. And at the end it's all white where all the foam gets created and obviously at the beginning you would have more of a blue tone because that's where you would still have kind of a river feel to it. So let's go to the color of the particle. And there we have what we talked about before. They start yellow and end red but we don't want it to be a birth to death but we want to have custom colors. And there we have the custom color map. And now, as I said in the beginning, we want to have something bluish, maybe a bit darker. And as they start to fall down, I'll just click the same blue, but make this brighter. Make it even brighter for the next one. 
make it white where the foam is happening and the last one we make it a little bit more blue again. And this is what this looks like at the moment. For me, this while the water is falling down, it spreads out a little bit too much to the side, so we can go back to the physics and just work on our extra angle here and just bring this a little bit closer to zero. So there we have it. Okay, and as we have created all of this white water, let's just change the name of this layer to white water. But of course we want to have the full river, so let's just duplicate that, bring it beneath the white water and call it river. And now I'm just making this a little bit more blue, just changing a few of those here. Make this a little bit more blue and for the physics, for the floor, I don't make this a bounce particle but an ice particle. In this way it looks like they are falling down and where they hit the floor they just slide over the floor, just like so. And there you have it. This is just falling down and sliding. And when we make the longevity a little bit longer, you can see that they will slide more and more. And now we're almost done. But you would say, okay, this looks like streaks and not really like water at the moment. So here comes the tricky part or the fun part. Let's start with our white water and let's just bring out the vector blur. And I'm just zooming in a little bit more here. And when I apply the vector blur and just go up with the mount, you can see that it kind of warps and, and smears all of the streaks into each other, which will give it the more organic look like if you think you throw water into the air, all the particles, or in this case, all the, the water streaks, will stick together until a certain point. And if there's, they are just too far away from each other, they will end up separating from each other. So when I'm bringing up the amount, you can see what's happening there. You can also play around with the smoothness a little bit and just find a look that fits for you. And let's just copy that effect and bring it onto our river. You can see that we have some water and the white water on top, let's just add it. So we can also bring out a levels effect to make the white water pop out more. And also change the seed so we don't have two identical particle systems. You can find that setting under extra and it will randomly generate a different seed of particles. Also, you could play a little bit with the settings in here just to give them a little, little bit of a different velocity, for example, as the white water maybe would have a different velocity. Now let's just play this back. And as a last step, I would maybe just blur the white water a little bit with a Gaussian blur. Let me solo this. And just tweak the settings a little bit. Maybe even go in the bounciness again and play with that just slightly. You see that changes the look of the white water here drastically. Let's maybe just darken our river for that. Let's just copy the levels effect from the white water. Of course, you could also go into the settings and change the colors. But in this way, I have all the color ramps set and I have a look that I like and just play with the overall setting. So I'll just bring in a levels effect here and darken this. And there you have it, a realistic looking waterfall. 
of course you you would still have to tweak a little bit more and just a quick hint in my example i used almost like eight different versions of the particle effect to create my final look you could fine tweak it and also work a little bit on it to get rid of all the extra streaks here for example but basically this is the technique that i used and once again you have to be aware that all of this is fully 3d and you can orbit around your waterfall and let's do a quick ram preview to see what we have created today and as I said, just feel free to add in more of those layers and tweak those. For example, you can add an extra layer of white water with just a small amount of particles by bringing down the birth rate. So you get single streaks of just white water, which just adds another level of small detail to it. And of course, that makes it more realistic. So for now, I hope you learned a little bit and I wish you a lot of fun by creating your own waterfalls in After Effects.